What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. Today it's team selection time ahead of game week 23. Now in this video I'm going to go through how I did in 22 and obviously look ahead to 23 itself. I did have a very very boring transfer plan which was just a downgrade of one of my bench players uh, to just a fodder just to get some money back and eventually spend that. But obviously with the double game week announcements that's changed. So I'm going to talk about all that, how I did last week, going forward, transfers, captaincy, all that good stuff. Please do give it a like if you enjoy it hit subscribe if you're new around here and let's talk about one football so the absolute legends at one football are once again sponsoring this video continuing to support let's talk fpl big shout out to them and thank you to everybody that's already downloaded it if you haven't you know what to do completely free app Links in the description below take you straight through to the Android or iOS store, depending on what device you're using. You can give it a download. It's got loads of information for not just the Premier League teams, by the way, but kind of all around the world football as well. So if you'd like to keep up to date with other leagues, there's info in there, team news, lineup news, goal alerts, all that good stuff. Please do give it a download. It's completely free. It helps out the channel. What have you got to lose? I feel like I've said this so many times this season, but what a weird game week, right? It starts off with Aaron Wan-Bissaka getting me 17 points. Absolutely incredible. Not only does he score, he gets an assist. Obviously, clean sheet, really weird game uh, for Man United. Fernandez gets 17 points. For anyone that watched the game, uh, there was a lot of people that captained him after like the fourth goal saying, well, I don't think I'm going to get anything from him. And he ends up with 17 points. The penalty should never have probably happened, um, which is fair enough. But obviously, Southampton lost anyway. Uh, when you're down to 10, it's always going to be a struggle. Then down to nine just made it even worse. So I come out of that game with 40 points from three players without my captain play. So I think, right, I'm onto a winner here. Uh, I checked my rank. It was right up to like 328. And then it was kind of like almost downhill, but not since then. Because Salah blanked, which I think was the biggest issue of the week, right? He just didn't do anything. Son obviously blanked as well. Everybody else returned. So with my captaincy, I could have pretty much thrown a dart at a dartboard and chose any other player and got more points than going for Salah uh, unless it landed on Son of course but all that being said I still came out on 85 points just imagine if I captain Fernandez. I know what if what if um, I would have hit the 100 point mark I think uh, but all, all that being said I still got a green arrow so I was 679th uh, last week now I'm 479 so I've gone up literally 200 places uh, and I think one thing I've try got to try and get through to myself is that a 200 rank rise when you're in the top 1000 is pretty big right it's still big to get that if I got another 200 this week then we're suddenly in 279 that's huge I don't think that's necessarily going to happen um, but we are looking good Man City clean sheet came in obviously who was expecting them not to get that um, but I think playing De Gea and wan over Martinez and Holding uh, was absolutely massive. Like, the call between De Gea and Martinez, because I thought West Ham would score, um, and I didn't know if Southampton necessarily would. Um, I thought, basically, I thought that move was quite close, so I just thought I'd play the lesser-owned player. Obviously, when the game went down to 10 men, Southampton had almost no chance, and they still nearly scored, by the way, um, so fair play to them. But super happy with the week. Gundogan coming on with assist and bonus points as well was decent. Grealish didn't have the best game. West Ham did a really good job on him, but he still came through with the assist, and so did Bamford as well. So everyone kind of chipping in with points. Wan Bissaka was the uh, was the standout. It was, it was just absolutely ridiculous. I just couldn't believe it when I saw him at the back post, and then I saw the shot, and I thought it was going wide to hit the post and then go in. It was a great moment, and those are the kind of great moments in FPL that you really enjoy. So really good week, 85 points, really good green arrow into the top 500 this is getting a bit ridiculous now uh, so i guess let's see how far we can go and let's talk about game week 23 okay so going into this week i've got two free transfers because i rolled one last week and it looks now like that was a good decision because obviously we've had this double game week announcement where there's four teams doubling in 24 uh fulham burnley everton and man city and then leeds and southampton are also doubling in game week 25 so not only have i got a bit of flexibility to think about that but i also have a bit of flexibility to um, hold maybe another transfer this week going into 24 that which will then allow me to have hopefully all the knowledge we need to plan for the rest of the uh, upcoming double game weeks there's still going to be more in the future but at least for the big one uh, in game week 26 so two free transfers is really big 1.7 still in the bank i still have quite a lot of money on my bench because obviously um, i played the bench reason i haven't had a chance to downgrade that yet and really we haven't needed to either without kane and de bruyne um needing to be in the sides really right now because they're out injured it hasn't caused me too many problems but it might do 
um, at some point. Now, this is the defense as it stands. Now, at the moment, I am playing one Man City defender. Now, I know people are going to be screaming at the screens. Have you not seen how good uh, Man City defense is? Have you not seen how few goals Liverpool have scored uh, recently? I fully get that. But I think with a match like this, it's pretty difficult to call. I mean, will Man City keep a clean sheet? Possibly. Uh, I'm certainly not saying it's out of the equation. In fact, if I had to bet money, it's possibly even more likely uh, that I would put money on Man City keeping the defence than Liverpool scoring. But I'm kind of just taking a bit of a gamble um, that they that Liverpool will score. And obviously, hopefully, I hope it's Salah because I own him too. And I just think Stones, like, what's the ceiling of Stones? It's not that high, right? He's probably going to get six points, maybe eight, if they keep a clean sheet in a low-scoring game, um, which isn't bad. But could wan get the same against Everton? And if Man City do concede, then I'd be up on points slightly. So I feel like I'm looking to get a few more points, but I'm not taking a massive risk in doing it, right? Benching Stones and playing wan instead, I don't think it's that big of a call, right? So far against Fulham at home, um, I have to play. And Cancelo has just got a little bit more upside than the rest of the defenders. How much he will play forward against Liverpool, I don't know. Um, but I don't see Pep really changing his ways too much. Now, originally... I was looking to play double Man United defence instead of double City, which I'm sure would have raised quite a few eyebrows. But with the double game week news now, I am probably going to spend my transfer on a goalkeeper. And I don't usually do that. But when there's double game weeks around, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, and De Gea is already quite expensive at 5.3. And Pope has now gone up to 5.5, which is a bit annoying. But I think De Gea to Pope is going to be my move this week. One of the reasons I like De Gea and haven't looked to downgrade him yet is I think his fixtures are actually quite good, going right up to 25. I've said that a lot of times about Man United. Um, so that's one of the reasons I want to keep him, right? They've got Everton this week, then it's West Brom, then it's Newcastle. The thing is, Nick Pope has now better fixtures, right? He plays Brighton this week, which is arguably a better fixture, potentially. I don't think... I mean, Brighton are a very good team, but I don't see him as one that's going to score a lot of goals past Burnley. Uh, then Burnley have a double game week of Fulham and Crystal Palace. Doesn't get really much better than that. And then in 25, they have West Brom as well. So they have the same fixture as David De Gea has next week. So De Gea to Pope, who, and by the way, Pope will probably double in 26 as well, looks like a pretty good move. And if Aston Villa have a better double, I've still got Martinez on my bench. And eventually Pope would probably be downgraded. Yes, I'm putting that downgrade off, which isn't necessarily ideal if lots of big hitters suddenly become options. But as it stands right now, money is not tight. Um, and even if you look at future doubles like Leeds, who are you going for? Players like Rafinha. That's just other ways to get money off my um, off my bench potentially. So uh, yeah, or, or sorry, out of my team I should say. So I think David De Gea to Pope is going to be my transfer. The only thing I'm kind of thinking about is De Gea to Pope cost me 0.2 million more. So I'm spending more money, right? If I kept De Gea, if I went from wan to a Burnley defender, I could save like a million. Right, so I could go to like uh, Peters, although I probably wouldn't just in case Taylor comes back. I'd go to Loughton. I could even go to me, right, for 4.9 million and still save some money. So I would still cover the same defenses, but with different players. The only thing with that is Nick Pope is so good for bonus, right? Because of the way Burnley defend, they often kind of make teams, like make their opposition resort to long shots or just shots that just aren't that good. Um, like low quality shots like what would be low xg shots basically and Pope then has an easy time of making saves he racks them up because of the way they, the Burnley defenders play they smash the ball like basically with bonus a lot some of it comes from passing so if you get a team like Man City for example they pass around the back a lot their defenders make a lot of passes therefore if it's a low scoring game they tend to get bonus. With Burnley, the centre-backs usually just pump it forward. They're not making loads and loads of passes. Therefore, Pope does it very well in the bonus point system. So I feel like everyone's going to pile on him, and I kind of want to get a piece of the action too. But wan to me, or to Peters, or to Loughton, whoever it might be, would save some money. So that's something I'm considering as well. Uh, and then long-term, maybe I just get rid of David De Gea and keep Martinez. And then I've, I've shifted money from goalkeeper and defence. So that's something I'm considering. But I do think going for a Burnley defender this week is a good call because good fixture this week, good fixtures in 24 where they double and a good fixture in 25. And if I really, really needed them, they double in 26 as well. So that's probably going to be my transfer. And I'm probably going to roll the other one because we're going to get so much info in 24. It's going to be worthwhile having two. So coming on to the midfield. So I'm definitely playing Gundogan and Salah. Um, I mean, realistically, I don't have any other options on the bench anyway. Chris Wood... 
might still be injured. I hope he gets back fit for game week 24, by the way, because he now has a double. And I know people will think, well, he's rubbish. But in the last three seasons, he's hit double digits in goals every single year. He's got Fulham and Crystal Palace. That's good fixtures, right? I'd argue that's even better than having Calvert-Lewin. Now, a lot of you will disagree with that, I'm sure. Um, but if he's fit, I think he's I think he's a good option for 24. So I'm quite happy I've got him. But this week, I don't want to play him. I don't want to play Stones or Holden ahead of Gundogan or Salah. So I know that game could be low scoring. But I'm just going to play both, right? And in terms of transferring Salah out, I kind of spoke about it yesterday on the Game Week preview, but he's just not a priority for me, especially with the double Game Week announcements. Like, I could take him out, but for who this week, right? I don't really want James Rodriguez. I don't want a Burnley midfielder. I don't want to put him down to Lookman. Maybe Rafinha in Game Week 25, but I've probably got other ways I can potentially do that if I really think uh, that I need him. And into Game Week 24 is when I'm going to have all the info about which moves I want to make. So maybe I change my mind on Salah next week but for this week I just don't see a good move so he stays almost by default and I also think his numbers and Liverpool's numbers are not that bad um, they just haven't obviously been getting the points which is frustrating from an FPL point of view uh, and Man City's not going to get any easier but Obviously, my hope is that Salah wipes the clean sheet and everyone plays their double defence, but it's not necessarily going to happen. With Grealish, I actually think that Arsenal at home might be a better fixture than the West Ham game because West Ham, David Moyes did a job on him um, and they played Fredericks and so far. So he played two right backs against Grealish and he had to switch to the right in the end to get his assist. Really good pass, to be fair. Uh, but I think Arsenal could be a better fixture. David Luiz is out. Leno's out as well through suspension. Um, so they are down a little bit in defence. And I don't think they're going to put two right backs on to deal with him. Arsenal are a good team, obviously, and they have been playing well recently. Um, but so have Aston Villa. So la last time, I think it was 3-0 to Villa. I'm not saying it'll be the same again, but I don't think it's a bad fixture for Grealish. And then look at the other two. So Fernandez is probably going to get a lot of captains this week because of the 17 points last week. Interestingly, he hadn't scored since like game week 12 or something like that, which was a penalty against Villa. And then before that, it was the Leicester game, I think, when he scored from um, or, or Leeds or Leicester uh, from open play. So he hasn't either. So Salah, Fernandez, and Son haven't actually been getting huge hauls recently. Salah obviously got one against West Ham. Fernandez just got his. So I think he will be higher captain. But. I've still got mine on Son, and it's just because of that fixture. The worry is Spurs look awful, right? And we all knew they wouldn't be as good without Kane, right? I don't think anyone said, well, Kane's out, they're going to be better. But I don't think some of us probably realise just how bad it is. I knew it would be bad. I didn't realise it would be this bad, right? They just don't look like they know how to play football anymore. The only thinking for me is, I went into that Chelsea game expecting no points. I even said weeks ago, right, by the way, when Kane was fit... That having Chelsea and Man City weren't necessarily that good a fixture, right? I think they had Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City. And I said, the fixtures in between are good, but I don't necessarily want to double up. So even back then, I was thinking they weren't good fixtures. So I wasn't expecting anything. But obviously, West Brom is completely different, right? It's such a good fixture. They will come to defend. That's my only worry. And I'm looking at that Spurs team thinking, how will they unlock West Brom? But Mourinho has got to do something. They've lost three games in a row now for the first time for eight years, I think. Um, Son, last night, he had his first touch in the box at 87 minutes. That is worrying. But it is Chelsea. West Brom's completely different. And if people are starting to get put off captain him, it kind of tempts me a little bit more just to go for it, just for the fixture. I think if it wasn't him, it'd be Fernandez or Antonio. I think both are good options. Um, but I do own both of them as well. So I guess my punishment is only going to be so many points. Because anything they get, I will get half of that versus captain as anyway. So right now I'm still on Son. I think that will hold. I might change. Obviously, I'll do a deadline stream so you'll know if it has changed. But as it stands, I'm still going for Son captain. Uh, I'm on three captain blanks in a row as well, by the way. So possibly don't follow what I'm doing. But I'm hoping not to make it four. So just to finish off, up front, Bamford, Antonio. I do think that's a really good fixture for... Um, Antonio, I know Fulham have kind of tightened up quite a bit and they haven't conceded a huge amount of goals recently. They've not necessarily got loads of wins, but they're not conceding a massive amount. Even against Leicester, um, who played really well, obviously they only scored two. Now, I say only, if West Ham were to score two, you'd expect Antonio to be involved. And he did play quite well with Lingard. I was quite impressed with that little um, partnership they formed. Obviously, Antonio didn't get any goals in the last game week, but he did get two assists for Lingard. Um, and he kind of was able to hot... Because the thing with Antonio is he can kind of do it all. So he can hold the ball up, he can get in behind... 
he gets into good position. So now he has kind of more strings to his bow to get points, I think, with someone like Lingard. We'll have to see whether he keeps on playing, but he is making, or he did make runs, I should say, against Aston Villa in behind. But it is just one game, so we probably shouldn't get too excited just yet. So Antonio definitely obviously plays. No, like, no doubt about that. He could be captain. I think if I was to take my captain off Son, I probably would go to Antonio. I don't, it's nothing that obviously against Fernandez. I've captained him um, a couple of times before, but I just feel like there's maybe a little bit more upside in going a bit different this week, but I could just get spooked and go for Fernandez. I don't know. And then Bamford obviously just been great all season. What else is there to say? Crystal Palace are rubbish. Fully expecting points in this one. Has a double game week in 25 to come as well. Um, so looking good. So overall, I think the squad is decent um already looking ahead to what could come in 26 i think i'm already pretty well set up in terms of the players i want kane and de bruyne would definitely make it a bit more difficult and at that point i'd probably have to decide whether i wanted to sell salad to get one of them because i just think it'd be too difficult to manage game week 24 double game week 25 double and 26 while trying to figure out how to get de bruyne and uh, and or kane back as well so son probably my captain transfer will be over wan bissaka to a burnley defender like ben me potentially um or de gea to pope and then i'm going to roll a transfer into 24 when we should finally know who's going to play in double game week 26 so looking pretty good right now like i said top 500 which i'm obviously really happy with fingers crossed we can get another green arrow this week so there we go that's it for this one if you have enjoyed it please do give it a like and hit subscribe if you're new around here leave me a comment below let me know what you think about my team is son captain a massive mistake what about pope versus ben me should i save some money or just get in the hero that is nick pope he was a legend last year he's already up to second in the goalkeeper rankings this year that could be even higher uh, over the next couple of games so we'll see how it goes if you want to support the channel even further obviously make sure to download one football that's completely free and i do have patreon links also in the description below so check out one football link in the description below you can check out patreon too uh, anyone that signs up goes up on the legends wall there's loads of perks and benefits over there so if you want to check them out like i said just hit that link read up all about it, and if you want to sign up you can do and if you don't that's perfectly fine too big shout out to roars and mark m who have signed up since the last uh, video as well so so thank you for that. I'll be back probably later on with a Capsi video and deadline stream tomorrow as well uh, before Game Week 23. And then we finally have a normal week to kind of get our thoughts in, in order ahead of uh, Game Week 24 uh, as well. So lots to think about right now. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. There's loads of uh, videos coming, of course. Give it a like. Hit subscribe if you're around here, like I said, and I'll see you soon.